This is where we have the how to use your planner. I tell you how to use it here, which is not very telling. It's again, it's, it's, this video is basically this page. So I'm explaining to you how I designed it and how I intended it for it to be used. Do I think there's a wrong way to plan? Yes. Yes, I do. I think you're doing it wrong when you start in the details. When you start with your to-do list, albeit tempting, you are missing the opportunity that planning allows. Executing your days rooted in what matters. In Spread of Planners, I included a couple pages about how to use a planner. The TLDR version of it, I designed it a specific way. But you can use it however you want because everything is mostly unlabeled and super functional. Sorry about that annoying hair right there. We all have different lives and priorities, so I don't want to hold anybody hostage how I think they should plan. I don't know what this was. I think I was going to quote. I don't know. However, I truly do believe there is an absolute core to what matters to every single one of our lives, and that is how we spend our time and who we spend it with. So with that in mind, this video is a walkthrough of how I intended the planners to be used. Okay, so I have a planner here and we're gonna do a walkthrough of all these front pages. This particular one, if you're wondering, this is the weekly planner in Celadon Pinstripe. So these prep pages are the most I'm gonna tell you what to do. Everything else, super unlabeled, very functional, very demure. I can't stop saying that. I just, it just, anytime I say very something, that just comes to mind. I hope that dies out soon. I feel like a school teacher. Okay, kids, carpet time. Crisscross applesauce, come join me for this story. The Sprout of Planner story. Okay. So this is where we have the how to use your planner. I tell you how to use it here, which is not very telling. It's again, it's, it's, this video is basically this page. So I'm explaining to you how I designed it and how I intended it for it to be used. But right up top here, there are no rules, no tutorials, no how to's. Whatever works for you, do it that way. Amen. I still adhere to that. First things first, values first. It is identifying your values and putting them down here. So I write about values. I write about intentions, how they flow from your values. And then if you are goal planning, they flow from your intentions. So it's identifying those values and those core values, especially you can have a lot of values, but you have some core values and putting it down here and then coming up with your intentions, because I believe planning should all stem from your values. The majority of how your time is spent stem from your values. So I do have a quasi self-guided workshop on how to find your values coming up on October 24th. It is pre-recorded, but it premieres then. What does Premiere mean? I don't know. No, it's on YouTube and it is, you'll see it. So I'll link it below. You'll see it and it'll say coming in however many days. And then once it premieres, which means once it goes live, we can all watch it together and people can comment on it. So if you were here for my the product reveal in September, the, I did that the same way. So it's pre-recorded, but we all watch together and then we can type in comments. So yes, it premieres on October 24th. I will be in the chat while it goes through that first run through, but you can watch it whenever you want. That's the beauty of it. I have the link below for that. Sign up to receive the workbook printable, which is needed for the workshop. Again, that link is below. Everything is absolutely free. Okay, back to our story. So we got our values. This is going to be a big deal. Then you have your people. It's a lot of words. I know that we can read. It's okay. So this is just saying people are very important. Remember, it goes back to that core of how we spend our time and who we spend it with. So people are so important. We're identifying our home team. That's like our people writing them down and then writing intentions for how and how often we want to be spending time with them, connecting with them during the year. That's the people. Now we have reminders. I feel so condescending. Reminders. Can everyone say reminders? So we have reminders here because I think a lot of us kind of want to pre-plan or there's things we don't want to commit to the actual monthly spread, whether that is seasonal chores, whether that is openers for things, or if there's just things we want to prep for. Like, oh gosh, okay, here in Minnesota, for example, by the time the snow actually flies, which we never know, is it going to be October or is it going to be end of December? Anyways, I feel like no matter when the snow stuff comes out now in like beginning of October and when it actually finally snows, 
and you have to go out and get your stuff, you're screwed because then it's over. Like, sorry, we already sold it. So I put down for this year in October to get all my snow stuff. That is what I put down here in my, in my last planner. So it's just things like that. And then let me really quick give you a peek here on the monthly view. I didn't, that might have been blurry. But in the monthly view, again, wide open, except for this quick little checklist of things of referring back to your prep list. So that is part of the things on here. So you got values, people, reminders. You got your year list. So this is going to be your yearly bucket list. What do you want to do in 2025? And then just a journal prompt. Hope for the year. You have that. That's it. So these are the biggest. There's some more pages that I, I'll quickly show you. But these are going to be the biggest prep pages. These are the things that you really want to get set up ahead of time before you start your year. Because it's going to refer to them in the monthly spread. Again, that checklist. But beyond this and your reflections, everything else is pretty functional and up to you. Just a really quick walk through calendar, holidays. We have this blank tracker or whatever you want to do. Or you could, it could be a planner. It could be tracker, planner, mix of both. Your 2026 calendar, bridge the gap. As plans come up, you can put them in here until you get your 2026 planner. Your calendar at a glance, blank pages. Down. You're going to see some packages. It's not aesthetic. Hashtag real life. We got two dot grid pages, which you cannot see, but they are there. And then we go to our monthly dashboard here. A lot of you are asking questions about what, can you give me ideas? Can you do a video on what to do with the dashboard? What are you going to do with the dashboard? And to that, Yes. I don't know what I'm going to do with this dashboard. I'm excited about it. I can tell you what I think I'm going to do. I think that I'm going to put birthdays somewhere. I think that I'm going to put important dates just to mark down maybe to reference afterwards. I am going to put down what my priorities are that month. And beyond that, I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. So I'm going to play around with this, but I will make a video of that. I will gather some intel from people what they intend to do with this and then we can have a fun fun little time putting our brains together to figure it out so that is the monthly dashboard and then like I said we have the monthly spread here I already jumped ahead but the intent of this page is again left very blank nothing is really labeled we have next month or previous next month we have some dot grids line pages we have check boxes here so the only thing we have is is that small checklist right there. The whole point when I was making this planner was thinking about the me and all the people who just are trying to keep their head above water, who are trying to keep their life simple and on the things that really matter the most to them. And so when you're looking and planning your month, it is that gentle nudge to go back and look at your values. What intentions have you set for your values? Who are your people? Who haven't you seen? Who do you want to get down on the schedule? What reminders are there? Is there something you mark down that you want to come out swinging for? That and then the year list. Year goes by quicker than you think. If you really want to do something, start getting those on your monthly spread there. So that is the intention there. A small checklist. Just a reminder. Not telling you hey, you absolutely got to schedule these in. Just a nudge like, hey, you decided these were important to you. Let's let's kind of keep them moving forward. Also, I made a video of how I plan my month. So I will link that here. One of these areas, I'll add the pop up there, of how I use this checklist to plan my month. And you can check it out there. All right, let's talk. After here, we have some blank pages. I have zero intention of what you should do with these. You get to do whatever you want with these. Sometimes it's just really nice to have some blank pages. You need a packing list. You need to set your budget for the month. You want to write down your meals. This is the baby. This is when I was creating this planner. I was like, what, what did I need during this really hard time in my life? This is what I wanted. I just love this layout. And there's really two big intentional things that I designed on this page. 
I wanted to be functional and simple. And the the two big pillars of Sprouted Planner, I wanted space up here because I wanted for you to set your intention for the week. By the end of this week, how do you want to feel? What do you want to have done? What do you want to experience? Like any kind of intentions. Like what are you setting your mind to for this week? You put it up there. Down here, I wanted room for reflection so you could reflect on your week. A weekly recap, your wins, your challenges, your favorite memories, however you want to reflect, put it down here. Again, nothing is labeled. I don't have intention up here. I don't have reflection down here. The only thing labeled is your, obviously, Monday through Sunday and your dates there. Everything else is, is blank there. So that is really my intention for the week. I'll grab a day as well, but I just want it intention space, reflection space. Everything else is up to you. Okay. Grab our pink panties. Here we go. Grab a random day. Okay, here's what a day looks like. Again, we have our intention space up here, a little reflection space down there. Everything else, except your daily schedule, unlabeled here. Up to you to do. Also, I have how to plan your week. How to plan your day videos. Those are in a couple versions ago planners. I need to do updated ones. But the the bones of it are still there. It's still how I plan my week and my day. So you can check those videos out. Okay, next we move on to the reflection section. So starting with the reflection questions. I know not everybody are big reflectors. Is that the, the way I want to say that? However, I just, oh man, I just feel like this is a big one. Really when my daughter was a baby, growing, still under a year old, my dad was freshly diagnosed with ALS, we're moving, work is crazy, it, time goes, it blurred. It, I mean, it felt like it crawled and it went so fast at the same time. I am so grateful I took the time, just a little bit of time every month, to write down the things that were happening. It made me pause and really see what was going on. It made me think about it. It made me, even though it was some really hard things, oh, it just allowed me to process it. And I can go back and read that time too, as, again, as hard as it is. But that was time, like, that was the end of my dad's life. Like, that was the beginning of my baby's life. Like, that's important stuff, no matter how hard it is. And we just go so fast that we never take the time to just reflect on it. Like it's just, it's, I'm a huge advocate of it. It's really important. And I, that is why I include it in these planners. That was the big thing. Intentionally spending my time and then reflecting on that time spent. Like that, I didn't think I was going to get emotional about that, but it, it's big. We have the month. These are all going to be the same questions, but we have our month reflection of what stands out as memorable. So you write down what's memorable. What are you proud of? What did you struggle with? What brought you joy? I don't think I want to actually read through all these, but this is specifically about your month. This is a fun part. This is what you're currently doing in the kind of what's currently going on in your favorites from the month. This is when you can talk about your intentions. So this is kind of holding you accountable for that. What were they? How'd it go? What's working? What's not working? Looking forward. So you can kind of close that month. You talked about it. The fun things, the hard things, the winning moments, how everything went. Close that door. Let's look forward to the next month. So we're looking forward. What are you looking forward to? What are you feeling challenged by? Uh, I'm coming focuses for those big four. And then just a little dot grid because who doesn't need a little dot grid section? And then we move into our next dashboard. There is also a year end reflection that refers back to the monthly reflections too. So it's, it's fun. As you can see, it's a cycle and all connected. Intentions, execute, reflect, repeat. That is how Sprouted Planners are set up to help you live an intentional life through planning. The one thing I hope you take away from this video is to start with what matters. That's your intention. Start your month, your week, your day with what's going to matter. There will never be a shortage of to-dos, of appointments. Those will never stop. The laundry will never stop. The having to cook will never stop. Those things, those are the sand. If we think back to those 
that analogy of the rocks and the sand. That is the sand. Don't let your day fill up with all that sand. Get your big rocks in. Those are the things that matter. And you'll fit in all those other little things in between. Don't forget to sign up for the Values Workshop in the link below. And I hope to chat with you in a few days. And if you're watching this way after the fact, that's okay. That is why it's on YouTube. You can still experience it all. You can still sign up to get those, that printable workbook and you can press play and you can just follow along. Thank you for spending your precious time watching this video and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.